Yes, hello, shalom, good morning. Today's Friday, it's the Sabbath here at, for me in Ottawa. My name is Daniel Fitzgerald, I hope you're well. I go by Daniel707 as well. I did two other videos uh, last night, but I'm not going to bother posting them because um, I don't think I should. Uh, I need to rewrite the script. Uh, not because of YouTube. And I indicate to the YouTube team in this video that I tried to email you, but... Uh, my iPhone's being hacked and my outgoing emails aren't reaching their destination. So I want to let the YouTube team know that. And I did receive your complaint. And I have reviewed the video in question. And I do not find anything wrong with the content. Um, and I want to say this to uh, the YouTube team respectfully. That there's nothing wrong with the content. So the person who complained about the content uh, is really, frankly, I think... Um, it doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, we see a lot of swearing on YouTube. We see videos of Nazis. We see uh, the Nazis and the white supremacists. We see people using foul language, YouTube team. Uh, we see uh, the government using their power to persuade uh, YouTube to uh, drop people's videos, especially where those videos tell truth against their governments. And YouTube, you need to stop doing that. You're, all you're doing is feeding the evils of Western states, governments, into committing more evils. Because the people are not allowed to complain. And in democracies, what keeps our democracies clean, what keeps them legitimate, is the people. And our democratic governments have become so evil that the people are not allowed to complain publicly in order to bring that balance of legitimacy back. So I ask YouTube to think that over as well. Now I'll continue on with my video. Today's Friday, it's the Sabbath. Um, I point my video at two people, and those two people know who I am. And I say to both of these people, okay, both of them, the first one I say to you, and this person knows who he is, okay, you better give up. <laughs> your application to the Superior Court and because the dynamic has changed and there's no way a countryside corrupted judge is going to save you so forget it any uh, contacts you have with corrupted government officials at this time is not going to work and also, my lawyer does not have the documents that you seek. And I want to tell you that as well. And I say to the other person, okay, you are responsible for the temporary loss of my estate. You are responsible, and that's why I terminated you. And you know the reasons why. And uh, this will be a matter before the courts regarding this person. And this person, you will have to pay my entire estate as a result of your illegal, legal activities. And I say to both of these people, you're both corrupt and you're both criminals. And I say to the other person who's not an attorney, the other one I direct this to, you have committed crimes. You made an attempt to steal my estate and sell my house without my specific permission. And I am 50% executor and trustee. And you shouldn't have done that. You also used an illegal will. And you're not going to be able to use a corrupted judge to protect you. Because you're going to be coming here to Ottawa is what's going to end up happening. And I say to the other person that you have also committed crimes and you violated the estate laws to the attorney in question. And you destroyed my estate. Mr. Maloney, you knew I was executor all along. And I asked you for an advance as executor trustee. And I say to the public... 
You want to talk about corrupted attorneys and a corrupted family member in with my attorney. And I accuse both of you, both of these people, my attorney and the other and the respondent, I accuse both of you of attempting to steal my estate. And you're both in trouble. And I say again to the other party, the respondent, your best bet, if you see my video, you better get down to that courthouse and withdraw your application. Okay? I have some specific evidence against you. A lot of it. And I will personally send it to your judge. And he'll see it in chambers. And then you're really finished. So, accept my kind offer. I'm a religious Jewish person. And I say to you, the respondent, I'm offering you mercy, and I would accept it. So, these two people, and I say this to you two, both of them, were working me over real good. Here I am, uh, trying to uh, arrange for my mom to get a headstone, okay? And I wanted to go see her and have that headstone planted, okay? And I wanted to, to go to the banks to make sure my mom's bills were paid as executor trustee. And I wanted to know all about her assets uh, to put total them all together. And not one person stopped me from doing that illegally. Two people, the respondent and my attorney, both of them working together in their own interests. And then they turn around and they accuse me of having mental instability. One, one uh, wanted to take over my executorship and the other one wanted to be sole executor. The two of them. That is disgusting. And so I hope that, you know, when I bring the matter forward, you know, uh, to, the, uh, to the courts, you know, that these guys are going to get charged criminally. Both of them. Uh, I wish to tell... Uh, you that I told my attorney, I, I looked up uh, months ago, I, lo I went on Google and I researched um, the criminal code under state laws, you see. Now, the people involved here think that, <clears throat> you know, because the estate matter is a civil matter, that they can't be criminally charged uh, regarding the estate matter. Yes, they can, indeed. When, when you run around using an illegal will, and you know it's illegal, and you run around with intent using that will for the sole purpose of um, giving yourself sole executorship to, to steal from your brother, and your brother's running around with the legal will where we split everything 50-50. And if something happens to either of us, it goes to our children. This is, this is the right thing my mom did. Okay, my lawyer has destroyed my ability to fight for my case. And as a result of terminating him, which I had to do, I could not find another attorney anywhere in this, in this city who would take the case without a retainer, unfortunately. This is what happened. And it's sad, but it's true. This is what this person did. This, this lawyer destroyed my estate. That's what he did. Because he wanted to be executor all along. And he knew, he knew months ago, you know, that my brother said no to him being executor. This lawyer wanted to be executor over the entire estate. And there was no reason for it. Because I was already executor trustee, but he would not recognize that for months. So I'm telling the public this, and um, whoever's listening in, none of this had to go to court. Okay? None of it. This lawyer lied to me and said that uh, my brother's lawyers quit on him or bailed. No, they didn't. Mr. Mr. Maloney was insisting on 
<laughs> himself being executor, and if not executor over the entire estate, uh, that my, another attorney. The two of them making money. I mean, I understand that uh, from my from my brother's point of view, but my brother can't be sole executor. He has no grounds, right? And my lawyer, another thing, is my lawyer did not uh, go and get evidence to prove what he stated in my objection. My lawyer never got any evidence. I asked him. He never responded. I said, you have to have evidence of these accusations against my brother. I asked him, what evidence do you have? Did your, did your investigator take a photo of the sign my brother put in my mom's house? And not only that, I say to you people that the people who witness this have to, have to actually testify in a civil court. The judges, they don't accept letters. Okay? Just like in any court, if you're going to testify in an estate on behalf of an executor or a beneficiary, because the executor has violated the, the estate laws and is trying to steal, or doing things that are with an illegal will, um, I, I mean, there's the civil end of it, there's the criminal end of it. Now, I have to have witnesses who witnessed my brother. You know, the city of Crystal Beach is not going to come down to the courthouse unless their time is paid for to give a statement that my brother faxed them his will, saying I get the house and the property. They're not going to do that. And in civil court, witnesses, it's not mandatory for them to come to the court to make statements before a judge. Okay? So I know how it works. And so my lawyer's got nothing. Zero. You know, all the allegations that I made against my brother are true. I'm not lying. They're all, they're all true. Okay? But there's no way to prove it. You can't, you know, and another thing I wish to tell people is when you accuse someone of being mentally unstable, you don't, you don't accuse them of being mentally unstable as a threat against them. And there are lots of mental, mentally ill people in Canada who can be executors and trustees for their family just because they're mentally ill doesn't immediately disqualify them from um, acting appropriately uh, for their family member okay this mr maloney this guy's incredible accusing me of being mentally unstable i hardly doubt it after <laughs> what my wife and i put up here put up with here excuse me for three weeks with this person upstairs for three weeks three weekends in a row okay this person throw, threw things at our door. This person banged on the ceilings. He banged on the walls by my air conditioner. He called my wife an effing bitch right in front of our door here. He grabbed his groin, screaming and yelling at my wife. He comes up and opens my door. I mean, you know. And I can't state the times that I told this person, look. And he's standing on our on our uh, porch here, staring through our door at my wife. Every time my wife could not sit outside on her porch, this guy kept coming around, standing there, staring at her and, and attempting a conversation with her. Okay? He would not leave her alone. And it got to where uh, my wife had to come and sit inside the house because this person was disturbing her. Now, that person definitely had, it was a psychopath with very serious mental issues but I believe that uh, we were targeted for that um, I believe that this person was put in upstairs specifically to bother us and it's amazing how this all happens uh, during a critical period of my mother's estate so um, anyways I wanted to make a short video I want to wish uh, uh, good people a very safe Sabbath um, and it's unfortunate that 
the public is still not allowed to see my videos because Mr. Trudeau is still being arrogant um, along with his corrupted mafia city, okay? In not uh, allowing my videos to be seen, seen outside the country. Now, this was a plot by the Trudeau government in, in with the mayor of, of Ottawa, Mayor Watson. Okay, the two of them did this. And it is uh, Trudeau and his government that are going to be res held accountable for what they've done. Uh, I say to you people out there, look, uh, my wife and I have lived here for uh, a year. Okay, it's a year, and no, I think it was a year uh, July. I can't remember if we moved in in August last year. It might have been August. So yeah, so I, we've been here a year now in this unit. We don't bother anyone. We're quiet. We mind our own business. Uh, the only thing I do is I'm on the phone. Okay, and but we don't bother anyone around here we don't have any friends around here we don't want any um, this is not our community these kinds of people you know uh, all I can say to you is a good Jew is always friendly and neighborly to his neighbors regardless of whom they may be or what they are this is the Jewish way but these people are not our kind of friends you know, but we're neighborly and we're polite and we say hello and we communicate. Um, we're very friendly because that, it, it, in respect of me, that's called being a good Jew, is respecting other people. And if other people come to you and they're friendly, then you be friendly back. If they come to you and say, do you have a cigarette or can I borrow something from you? Um, depending on what it is, okay? A good Jew is kind, and that's me. That is, of course, until until people start screwing around with me and my wife, then I get mad. And I don't commit any crimes. I can't call the police, okay? My wife and I are so prejudiced against because they want us silenced because we have a lot on them. And because we have a lot on them, they're using the very people who hurt us to try and keep us silenced. You know, in regards to uh, my inability to email the Supreme Court from here, because my emails are being blocked from here, I'm not getting an auto response, okay? Well, I will tell the public that uh, Trudeau is the one behind that. Okay, and if Trudeau wants to do that, then he better put a monetary offer on the table formally. And if he's not prepared to do that and continue to silence my wife and I, that's only going to aggravate me even more and give me the determination to proceed in the Supreme Court. And I remind Trudeau, Mr. Trudeau, I remind you, the Supreme Court is only a mile down the street. Okay. And if you mess with my laptop, Mr. Trudeau, or your Watson does, I'll just go down to the Supreme Court, Mr. Prime Minister, with hard copies. That's all. Um, I have a right to my estate, and as far as I'm concerned, my wife and I not only have a, a right to the entire estate, we also have a right to compensation from the government of Canada. And I will tell the public now, and Trudeau, you listen to me, Mr. Trudeau, and you listen to me, Mayor Watson. You listen to me. You are going to compensate me, Mr. Trudeau. Do you understand? You are going to be forced to. Your little garbage with your little wiping away Section 24.1 so that litigants only have a leave to appeal from a lower court, Mr. Prime Minister, how sneaky you are. Well... I plan on having that overturned, Justin, okay? And with this case, Mr. Prime Minister, when I give them the information with the motion, believe me, Mr. Prime Minister, they are going to want to hear this case because this one's special, isn't it? Anyways, I got to go.
uh, it's late. I wish you all again a very warm Sabbath to my Jewish colleagues, to uh, my Russian uh, Federation friends. I wish a warm and safe Sabbath to my Chinese and government friends and the President Xi of China and uh, President Vladimir Putin. But I don't wish the Israeli government nothing. I consider the Israeli government to be a Nazi Reich. Isn't that crazy? Crazy, isn't it? Yes, it is. I agree. It is crazy. But, you see, the Israeli government are Nazis, okay? And they go by the premise that, <laughs> that it is so impossible nobody will believe them. Nobody will believe that they're Nazis. And that's how they get away with it. It's impossible for a Jewish government of Israel to be Nazis, right? Well, I got bad news for you. No, it's not. It's quite reasonable and could be very true. And I got to go. Shalom, God bless. I wish you all a warm and happy Sabbath and thank you.